Can you spot the antique doll? Learn along with me today what to look for so you can spend your money on the dolls you want. I also have a 50 cent doll in this bunch. <laughs> Hi there, Dolly friends. Today I just want to share a few of the inexpensive dolls that I've found. This young lady here, she told me her name was Daphne and she was 50 cents at the junk shop where I bought the other doll for 50 cents, which I showed you my Tony doll. This is the only rag doll that I've ever purchased. If I had played with dolls when I was little, I probably would have liked a rag doll. I did have, I had a Malibu Barbie and I had a baby alive and I sort of kind of played with them, but um, I probably would have liked a rag doll because they're kind of like plushy toys, which is really what I played with. She's really big. She's 29 <laughs> inches long. And I don't know anything about her. These smart doll people out there, you knowledgeable collectors, uh, let me know if you know anything. So I'm just gonna tell you what I noticed about her. I had initially gotten all her clothes off and her wig thinking that I would throw her in the wash and I just couldn't do it. I was so afraid to ruin her or have her fall apart. Her neck, if you look at it here, looks like it might have been hand sewed or maybe it kind of you can see it's a kind it's kind of wobbly maybe it's been re-sewn over the years um her wig was sewn on haphazardly and it is wool mohair or some other kind of wool it's um definitely wool and you can see where it had been bright at one time she has an old flower in her hair and that is well attached to her wig. So I did take her wig off and re-sew it on. It's just sewn to a strip here and then onto her head. And I was able to see when I got her wig off and you can see too, there's another face on the back of her. So I don't know if she was some kind of kit. I know that there were doll making kits. I don't see anything really different about the face on the back from the face on the front. The eyes seem very similar. I'm not really sure. So I don't know if these lines here were where other hair or things were supposed to be glued. I really don't know. This is how I found her. I did take her dress off and wash it. It's very, very thin cotton material, very, very thin, and it has some pretty pale flowers on it, which you can see there, and a little bit of um, lace. The dress, I believe, is handmade, and then these long sleeves, uh, I don't know the proper fashion term for them, these are a coarser cotton cotton material here woven looks a little bit like linen but it's cotton um, anyway here's the fabric some more on the dress and you can see it hand stitched here but let's take it off see how she's made here and how her arms are sewn on there I reinforced her shoulders this was all the way open here and there were it's been a while now so I'm sure there was cotton coming out of there it's an old unprocessed cotton that still has little fibers and seeds and things in it it's not polyfill like you see nowadays and here's her little underwear which are sewn onto her so these are very interesting these look antique to me this looks like antique fabric um, I don't know, this almost feels like linen. This is like a, almost like a treadle machine stitch look here. Can you see it? They're actual stitches. Let's 
see if you can tell inside. Yeah, you can kind of see it a little more there. Very, very basic. And her legs are attached in the same kind of knot that the arms are. The tops of her legs seem to be finished in an interesting way with a damask-like cloth. They're very soft. Here she is, and she's pretty happy to be out here with the other dolls because I mainly just have her in my bedroom right now. There's, she's so long and floppy, I'm not really sure where to put her. She may be what's called a boudoir doll, which are dolls that you would set on your bed. You know, you Let's fluff talk your about bed. the chinas now. I am fascinated with china dolls. They're called china dolls because of the porcelain china that they're made from. Many of them were actually manufactured in Germany. My friend Diana has been helping me. She's a longtime collector and lover of china dolls and she knows so much. So, If you look at her face, it's pretty obvious that she's some kind of reproduction. Somebody tried uh, to make her look like the antique china head dolls, but and she does look that way, but it's very crude. This is better than it would look if I tried to do this myself. I would like to find an antique head for her. Anyway, the dress looks old and let's look at her body and her underwear, which is where Diana really helped me kind of figure out what's what here. Sorry, Victoria. I'm calling her Victoria because my cat, whose name is Beckham, really loves this doll. And he, he doesn't really care about my other dolls, but this doll, if it's out, he'll snuggle up and just like lay in her lap. Now her slip looks really old. And you can kind of see how it's made here. I guess sometimes the bodies were glued and often sewn through these holes onto the body. Her body is definitely sawdust. It's probably been leaking a few times over the years. I won't totally undress her, but you can see it here. And it's old. Like I already said, her body is stuffed with sawdust. She has the wide hips and she has her legs tied together here. Is that a doll collector thing? Is that a china doll thing? I don't know about that. Um, I think it's kind of cute. Well, with the help of my friend Diana, we decided that she is a new head, arms and legs, on an old antique body. So eventually I'd like to maybe replace her head with an actual antique, um, but I'll leave her as she is for now. Bought these two girls together on eBay for $15 and the description said use one for parts and that the other one was an antique. You don't need to be an expert, especially when you see them side by side to see which one is the antique. Just look at the detail in their faces, but I'm really happy that I bought this lot because of this antique doll. She is very, very special and I can't wait to tell you all about her. But first, I wanna tell you about the other girl. I'm just calling her Blondie. Now Blondie is another reproduction doll um, with crudely painted features, as you can see. She does have a vintage dress on but her body, I think, is new. Here's her little slip. Looks like an antique to me, and it very well may be. Uh, it's very nice. I don't think her body is very old at all. It's a very lightweight cotton fabric on the outside, and I, it may be polyfilled. I feel like I could just go down to the craft store and buy a body like this to make a doll. Not going to take her apart to repair the other doll. And her dress certainly seems to fit her perfectly. Oh, Blondie, I'm not sure what's going to happen to you.
<laughs> After I received this doll, she quickly became one of my favorites in my collection. You can feel in the porcelain how different it is from the ceramic of the reproduction dolls. Now she has a lot going on and Diana really helped me um, kind of sleuth my way through her. You can see how beautiful the doll is and the difference in the detail between the reproduction dolls is rather striking. Sometimes the shoulder plate would have been marked Germany, sometimes not. And as you can see, she has a big chip here. Typically, she would not have been sewn with the fabric over the shoulders that way. Diana was really helping me understand how the doll would have been constructed and her body would have been more like one of the other dolls. You can see her arm missing there and you can see that she's stuffed with old cotton. Um, the arm that's on her is much too big and is definitely not an antique. But all the stains on her body match her old slip that she's wearing. It's really interesting. So Diana was thinking that maybe the mother of the little girl that had this doll, when it broke, she put another body over it and sewed it to keep it whole, to keep it from scratching and breaking further. I'm just showing you the legs here. She has some fantastic boots on, which I'll show you in a moment. She's really special. Let's turn her over now so you can see what's so great about her. Yes, her name is written on there, Margie, and you can see the ink dripping. And you can kind of see where the stains match on her little body. And just look at this precious writing. It says, to Louise from Mother and Dad, 1918. So, so cute. Now there is some other writing on there, which I want to show you. And I want you to see if you can figure out what it says. I did eventually figure out what it said, but I want to see if you can figure it out. So you can see that there's a number four there and some other writing. Another number looks like it might say five or S and it looks like some D. I actually there. put her down and I was thinking about this doll all day after I got her. I was texting with my friend and pic showing pictures and later on in the day, the light bulb came on. If you know what that says, please leave it in the comment. But I'm gonna tell you right now, it says, four years old. So Louise was four years old in 1918. Now, as you know, the Spanish flu, or what was called the Spanish flu, was a global pandemic that infected 500 million people around the globe between 1918 and 1919. And it just I don't know, made me think of a little girl that could have been sick or parents that could have been sick or anything like that. Um, let's not get too morbid, but I absolutely love this doll because of the writing on her. Now check out her stylish boots. I don't know if these are original to her, if they're antique or vintage or what they are. They they appear to be a little bit old. I don't know. They don't have the same kind of porcelain that the face does and the arm definitely does not seem old to me. It seems like the same as the one that's on Victoria. I love this doll. I would like to find a little dress for her and some arms and I'm so happy I have these dolls. Um, yeah, next time we are, are definitely going to talk about the dolls' houses and the history of the families that live there. And of course, we'll be doing the giveaway next week. A great grand thank you to everyone who's watching today. Please come back and visit me next time in the doll cupboard. She's such a moose.